What's up survivors, I'm Natural Born and in today's video we're going to talk about 77 tips and tricks for 7 days to die on console. Now I know there's a lot of new survivors picking up the console version for the first time, which is awesome. So I thought I'd put a video together with a few tips and tricks that I picked up over a few hundred hours of gameplay. Now these aren't in any order and should help you early, mid and late game. I'll leave timestamps in the description below. Now this video is mainly aimed at beginners, but if you enjoyed the video or learned something new, then let me know in the comments below. Hashtag what tip was your favourite, or if any of you veterans out there think there's anything that I left out. Now let's jump straight into the video with number one, being doors. When you find a POI that you want to stay in for the night, I recommend breaking all of the doors in the house and blocking the doorway with wooden frames. Zombies pathfind to doors, so by doing this, zombies won't actually know where the weakest point in the building is, and will randomly attack the blocks that are closest to you. And depending on your POI, it could be a cobblestone or concrete foundation. Now if you're looking to fight the zombies attacking your POI instead of hiding inside, you might want to use hatch frames instead of wooden frames. And that way, you'll be able to fight off the horde of undead. Zombies will be able to damage the hatch, but you can repair it as you go and still hit the zombies over the top. The zombies will pathfind to the hatch frame. The water source can be really tricky to get your hands on in the early game, but if you're near a snow biome, you can dig the snow up and cook it in a campfire to fill your cans or glass jars. I personally have a couple of stacks of snow inside my base at all times, so water is never an issue. Another way to have an infinite water source is to use a bucket in a 2x2 space. Simply place your water down and pick it back up. This is a bug and the first water source you place will always stay there and then place your water down in the opposite corner, allowing you to fill your glass jars and have an infinite water source in your base. If you've ever loaded into the game and haven't changed your settings, you might notice it's a bit dark at night time. Almost dark enough that the game is unplayable. You need to go to the settings at the main menu and turn your gamma up to the max. Trust me, it makes a world of difference to your game. And speaking of settings, that brings me on to number six, and that is the distant terrain setting. You want to turn this on. That way you'll be able to see a lot more in your game, especially in random gen, it's going to help you find POIs, towns and different biomes a lot easier. Early game when you receive iron from mining rocks, your best bet is to scrap the iron, so you can make your first iron club. You will find iron in abundance throughout your playthrough, in early days, especially day one, you probably won't have a forge, so don't be afraid to scrap your raw iron. Tree stumps contain some of the best loot in the game. You can find a decent amount of them in the forest biomes, but they most commonly spawn in the snow biome. Make sure to keep an eye out for them and always loot them when possible. You can find honey, night vision goggles, gun parts, and a bunch of great loot inside. If you look at your map, you will most likely see brown spots scattered throughout the map, especially in the forest biomes. These brown spots are actually clay, so if you're on the hunt for clay, grab a shovel and start digging. If you come across a trader, it's easy to look at their compound and think that would be a great place to spend the night, but don't. When the night begins at 10pm, the trader will kick you out and won't let you back until it's 6am. I learnt this one the hard way, don't be me. It's safe to say that zombies in the console version of the game aren't the smartest, so if you want a safe place to call home where zombies cannot and will not bother you, then you want to build a bunker base. Zombies cannot dig down in the console version, so even leaving an exposed hatch frame, your base will still be safe, even on a horde night. Just make sure to close the hatch on your way down. The struggle of inventory management in this game is real. If you have multiple gun parts for the same gun, you can combine them in your inventory to save space, and pull them apart when you get back to your base. Just remember, you will need the schematic for that gun though. Speaking of inventory management, when out and about and looting, especially in towns, I put storage boxes either in front of houses or at the intersections, and that way I don't have to drop loot and I can come back through at a later time to pick up any supplies that I left behind. This is the way of the hoarder. Toilets have a high chance of spawning pistols inside them, so if you don't mind digging through a pile of turds, then I recommend to check every toilet that you come across. Night time can become quite daunting. So when the night falls, it's the best time to start levelling your skills through bulk crafting. Early game stone axes and wooden clubs are the best to bulk craft, raising your tool smithing and weapon smithing. Just make sure you scrap everything you craft so you can get some resources back to craft more. 
Wrenches can be used to pull apart just about everything in the game, including workbenches, chem benches, cement mixers, and the forge. So if you come across any in your world, you can break them down with a wrench, so you can pick them back up and place them down in your base, or wherever you want. The wrench doesn't do the most damage when pulling things apart. You can use your axe or pickaxe to damage whatever workstation you're trying to pick up. Just make sure you don't destroy it in the process, and don't forget to use the wrench to finish it off. Another thing the wrench is great for is collecting electrical parts and components. Just about every house in the game has multiple lights in and outside. Pulling these apart early game can be a great source of money. Most houses will easily give you around 500 to 1000 dukes worth of parts. Now you might have found empty shopping baskets lying around that you can pick up with your mini bike. You might have also noticed shopping baskets that are full that you can loot. You can actually use a wrench to pull these apart, receiving the shopping basket. When travelling on foot, you might have noticed tyres randomly scattered across the roads. You can actually break these tyres to have a chance at receiving the tyre. They are good to sell early game, or you can combine them in your workbench to get yourself level 600 tyres for your mini bike. The Plague Nurse will almost always drop your medical supplies, including antibiotics. Early game, I recommend to take advantage of this, as they are a common spawn and can very well save your life. Sometimes you might struggle to find antibiotics, and the danger of infection is real. Honey can be eaten and will cure infection. You can find honey in tree stumps, or from harvesting the hornets in the wasteland. Mechanical parts are something that you're going to need a lot of. You can get mechanical parts from using a wrench on shopping trolleys, aircon systems, which are commonly found either on the sides or at the back of houses, the roof of buildings, or in the attics of houses, or by pulling apart office chairs or filing cabinets. Now if you're big on loot respawning, I'd avoid pulling apart the filing cabinets, as these can spawn schematics in them. When you learn steel smithing, this will teach you the recipe to craft mechanical parts. When building your mini bike, engines and batteries can be a real hassle to find. Pulling cars apart with a wrench is the easiest method to get them, but if you're big on loot respawning, you don't really want to destroy every car in the world, as cars have a low chance of spawning batteries and engines inside them. Early game when you don't have access to a good pickaxe, you might come across a few metal doors, or even wool, or gun safes, and think that you're going to have to spend 10 minutes and 20 stone axes to get in. But depending on the walls, you might have a metal door surrounded by wooden blocks or a wall safe sitting inside a wooden block. You can break your way around the door or break the block that the safe is inside and the blocks around it. This will cause the safe to drop, letting you grab all the goodies inside. But be aware that the safe will not respawn and they have a high chance of spawning gun parts. Even if you have your settings set to zombies never run, barrels will always run, whether it's night or daytime. Screamers can call ferals in and they can spawn in the hub cities. Be careful out there survivors. Now zombies may not be able to dig down in this version of the game, but they can dig straight. When building your base you want to make sure that you're always at the lowest point of the land, because the zombies aren't that smart and they get caught on parts of the terrain. And if that's lower than your foundation, they will dig straight through it to get under your base. So try avoid digging trenches around your base. Cops and ferals drop the best loot. Cops will always have pistols, sawn off shotguns and ammo. And ferals will always drop your gun parts and sometimes military armour. Always loot them when possible. Not only are the zombies out to get you in this game, but so is the weather. I recommend always having a poncho and leather duster or puffer jacket on you at all times. No matter what you're wearing, if you alternate between these two pieces of clothing, then the temperature shouldn't bother you again. Coffee and snowberry juice will help keep you warm in the snow, and red tea and yucca juice will help keep you cool in the desert. When riding your mini bike, I highly recommend sticking to the roads. The last thing you want to do is go flying off a cliff and break your mini bike and every bone in your body, or just as bad, landmines are a thing in this game, and if you drive over one, you're going to be dead before you even know what happened. Screamers aren't only attracted by forges and campfires, but by just about everything you do. Mining blocks in the same area for too long, shooting your guns, leaving zombie corpses and gore blocks lying around, or by using any workstation. These actions will raise your heat level, so just be sure to watch your back. The last thing you want is a feral 
for a zombie bear running at you in the middle of the day. Structural integrity in this game is real, and so is cave-ins. When digging a mineshaft at bedrock, my rule of thumb is 5x5, five five, and that's if I'm building a mineshaft. If I'm just digging a tunnel, then I stick to 3x3. Three three. The medicine skill can be quite hard to level in this game if you're not trying to raise it. Now this skill goes up when you use medical supplies. You can actually use bandages and splints when your character is at full health. This can be a good one to do throughout the night, helping you get those few extra levels. In the late game, it's so easy to fill your inventory when out and about looting, especially if you're nowhere near your base. You can carry a workbench and a wrench with you at all times to combine any goodies that you find along the way, like gun parts, mini bike parts, weapons, tools and armour. Always remember certain foods will give off a smell that attracts zombies, especially meat. If you're not looking for that extra attention, store your smelly foods in your base, or your mini bike, and eat when needed. Most of the old houses outside of towns will have sheets of scrap metal on the ground. A lot of these are actually covering up a bag or a purse. You can break through the wood beside it to see what loot is stashed underneath. Spider zombies can climb directly up but as long as you have one block sticking out from the wall, they can't climb over it. Early game frames work really well because you can shoot through them, but late game, iron bars are the best. You can also place barbed wire or spikes underneath your iron bars, and this will damage and kill the spider zombies, saving you the trouble of having to do it. When selling guns to the trader, first you want to click assemble on the weapon. This will automatically take all of the ammo out of the weapon, and then you can sell the gun to the trader for the same price but you get that little bit of extra ammo. And in the zombie apocalypse, every bullet counts. Bookshelves, letterboxes, and supply drops have the highest chance to spawn schematics in the game, but you can also find schematics in any searchable item in the game, including piles of trash. So don't forget to loot everything. Being an open world survival crafting game, you're gonna find a lot of items in this game and be tempted to sell them, scrap them, or even drop them. I recommend taking the time to look through your crafting menu and all of the different workstations to see what's used for what. Every single item in this game does have a use, but whether or not it's practical, now that's a whole different story. Mining for resources can be tedious at times if you don't know where to mine. Now you can actually find any ore in any biome, but each biome spawns more of one type of resource. Forest biomes have more lead in them, snow biomes in the wasteland have more nitrate powder, Burnt forests and the plains biome have more coal, and the desert has all the oil shell. Iron spawns the same in all of these biomes. Repair your clothing, weapons or tools before combining them. This can actually save you a lot of resources in the long run, especially when using steel tools. And when the items are at full durability, you'll actually end up with a higher quality item when combining them in the workbench. When you're out looting, I always carry a stack of cloth and leather with me. Repair all the crappy clothes you find before scraping them. This is going to help level your skills in tailoring and leather working. Animal hide can actually be used to craft bellows for the forge or an animal hide poncho. These two items can be crafted with leather as well. Or if you have half of the leather needed and half of the animal hide needed, you can craft your animal hide into leather. Both items sell for a lot of dukes too. Mining helmets are a must in this game, and can be commonly found in searchable cars, but you can also craft them in a workbench with a football helmet, flashlight, duct tape, electrical parts, and scrap plastics. The quality of the football helmet and flashlight do not affect the quality of the mining helmet. This is based on your armour crafting, so you're better off using low quality and damaged parts if you plan on crafting one. Drinking beer can stop your character from being stunned for a certain amount of time. So if you get surprised or overrun at any time, drinking a beer can potentially save your life. It's also a good excuse to down a beer on Horde Night. When exploring towns and POIs, if you're worried about the locals throwing you a welcoming party, or even if you're worried about being ambushed by a wandering horde, keep some wooden spikes on your hotbar. When everybody rushes in to say hello, you can place these spikes down most of the zombies will walk straight into the spikes, turning them into crawlers and making your job a little bit easier. Hunting with a bow can be fun, but annoying at the same time. 
If you're struggling to hit animals with your arrows, guns work really well, especially the sniper rifle. Just aim for the head and you'll be eating like a king in no time. And if you're still struggling a bit with that, use your mini bike and run them down. Ain't nothing wrong with a bit of roadkill in the apocalypse. Stone hatchets, wrenches, hammers and nail guns can all be used to upgrade blocks and using any of these items will level your construction tools. The order of these is worst to best. You do not need any nails in the nail gun to upgrade with it. When combining a flashlight with your weapons, the level or the quality of the flashlight does not count towards your weapons level, quality or even selling price. So low level flashlights are best to put in your weapon and you can sell any of the higher quality ones you find some extra dukes. Now this one's pretty obvious and I'm ashamed to admit that it took me quite some time to figure this out and that is that you can smelt sand inside the forge to create glass instead of smelting down glass panes and broken glass. If you're unlucky and you happen to die multiple times trying to get back to your bag the game will only allow one backpack marker to be on the map at all times. If you think you might die trying to get back to your stuff, place a marker down. Even if you die and the original bag marker is gone, your bag and all of your stuff will still be waiting there for you to find it. Wood is by far the resource you will use the most of throughout your playthrough. You can plant tree seeds and when the tree has reached three quarters maturity, you can chop it down and receive two seeds back every time. Although I recommend leaving the tree until it's fully grown so you can get the maximum amount of wood back. When farming in this game, you can plant your seeds on any patch of dirt, you will only get a return of one though. You can use a farming hoe to till the soil, and that will allow you to get a return of two, or you can craft fertilizer, and if you add this to tilled soil, you will get a return of four. Certain foods can give more than this, like corn will give five when planted on fertilized soil. Just remember that you won't get seeds back, and you will have to craft the seeds from what you have harvested. The small boulders you find on the surface of the world, usually in or around clay patches, are one of the easiest ways to find raw iron in the game. Not only early game, but late game too. These rocks also have a chance to give you lead, nitrate powder and coal. You can use frames to level uneven ground. This can help when building your base or even your hall base. Like I said, zombies in this version aren't the smartest and can pretty much get caught up on anything. Or even if you're big on aesthetics, then this can help you get that nice overall look to your base. When harvesting gore blocks, make sure to always use a knife. This will allow you to get a little bit of animal fat from every corpse. Animal fat sells for a really good price at the traders, but if you cook it into tallow first, then you're going to get even more dukes for selling it. Old sham sandwiches are used to craft mouldy bread, which is used to craft antibiotics in a chem station. But trust me, it's really not worth it. You're better off just dropping them, unless you like hoarding in this game, like I do, then you can have a crate with about a thousand old sham sandwiches in them, for no reason at all. Or to eventually craft into mouldy bread, and then into antibiotics to sell for a nice stack of dukes. Once you've spent a bit of time in your world, you might have noticed not as many animals spawning around your base. If you've hunted all the animals in your area, or if you destroyed every rock, tree and plant fibre in the area, animals will stop spawning. The easy solution is to travel a bit further away from your base, find an area you haven't explored there, try not to destroy the environment in that area, and you shouldn't have any trouble finding animals there in the future. When your tools and weapons reach half durability, they will start doing less damage. It's always best to repair at this point, but repairing your tools pretty much uses the same amount of resources, depending on the durability. But no matter what quality you repair your tools at, the quality will always be the same. When you find a well, either outside of a POI or at a trader's, make sure to check inside. A lot of these wells actually contain mines and underground bunkers, usually have a lot of loot scattered all throughout them. The ones that you find that aren't at the traders also make for great bases as well. Just make sure to cover the entrance back up and build a ladder and a hatch frame to get yourself in and out. Navis Gain is a really good map to start on when you're learning the game, but be aware that random gen spawns a lot more POIs, 
towns and traders. The towns will usually have multiple of the same POIs such as poppin' pills, working stiffs and shotgun messiahs. Random gem maps are a lot bigger than the Navis game map and are definitely a better option when you plan on living in your world long term. Screamers can be a pain in the ass, especially if you're just trying to cook a little bit of food or iron. I recommend when you build your whore base to store all of your forges there and that way you can actually farm screamer hordes whenever you want or you can use it to complete your screamer challenges. My base has a total of 32 forges and I can get a screamer around every 30 seconds. Screamers can call in every zombie in the game including ferals and cops so farming them can get you some really good loot. When you're driving around on your mini bike, you're going to drive past a lot of zombies and most likely be tempted to run them down. But be aware, every time you run a zombie down, you will lose durability on your mini bike, and all those corpses you leave behind can cause a lot of lag in your world. You can use repair kits to fix your mini bike, but it will drop the quality of the items. You can actually take the engine out and put it in a chainsaw or an auger and fix it that way, and you won't lose any durability on the engine. Making gunpowder is a must in this game, especially late game, and coal isn't always the easiest resource to come by. Just like clay, surface coal will actually show up on your map as small black spots, making it a lot easier to stock up on that precious coal. The large black dots on the map are the large stone rocks. You can also get small amounts of coal from chopping down trees in the burnt biome. The wasteland is truly a waste of land. Not only do landmines spawn around military camps, but they also spawn all throughout the wasteland. And on top of that, so do dogs. Pretty much every second zombie you're going to find out there is a dog. Don't go there early game, and if you have to, just remember to watch your back and your step as well. Challenges are notes that you can find scattered throughout the world, or from looting zombies. I highly recommend saving these challenges up, and using the zombie kill related ones on horde nights. For every challenge completed you'll receive one skill point. Most of these challenges have an in-game timer and if you complete it in time you'll receive extra skill points. Late game these extra skill points are extremely helpful. When fighting zombies it's easy to loot their corpses and continue on with your day. But these core blocks actually take quite a long time to despawn and even if you're on the other side of the map your game is going to constantly keep them rendered. This can cause major issues with lag and even potentially crash your game. Use a knife or an axe to destroy them, saving this from ever being a problem. And not to mention that gore blocks actually raise your heat level and enough of them will start attracting screamers. When digging for buried treasure, I recommend bringing a stack of sod with you and patching up the hole once you've found your treasure. Just in case you do decide to go off riding on your mini bike, the last thing you want to do is drive straight into a hole and have to make a ramp or dig your bike out. It only takes a minute to patch up the hole and if you happen to get another buried treasure in the same spot, you can actually pick the sod back up and place it back down when needed. Full damage in this game can break your legs and that's never fun. You can actually reduce a lot of the damage taken if you crouch before you drop off a ledge or a building, or right before you hit the ground. Using this tactic can very well be the difference between life and death. Even though you can craft just about everything in this game, there are a few items that cannot be crafted and are quite rare to come by. A few examples are military armour and fibre, machetes and night vision goggles. These items are worth a lot at the trader, but be aware if you sell them, you may not find any more for a very long time. I personally always buy all the military fibre from the traders when they have it in stock. This is the only way to repair your military armour. You can also find the Apache chest with Taz's stone axe, or the Mountain Man chest with the herbal antibiotics recipe. If you've travelled around your map, you might have noticed a red zone on the edges of your map, or maybe you were unlucky enough to run straight into this zone without knowing what's happening. This radiated zone is actually the world border. 
even if you have full hazmat gear, you won't survive a minute in there. And nothing spawns out there. No loot, no POIs, and no zombies. So it should be a no-brainer to steer clear of this area. Burn victim zombies spawn in the burnt forest biome and during horde nights. If the zombie gets a hit on you, they can actually set you on fire. If this happens, you can drink water to put yourself out or jump into a water source. When harvesting these zombies with a knife, you actually have a chance to receive charred meat. This can be an easy food source early game if you spawn in or around a burnt biome. When building your base, be aware that even upgrading from wood to iron to concrete to steel, that when these blocks are broken, they do not break down to what they once were. An example is if you build your base out of wood and upgrade to iron. If zombies break those iron blocks, they will not break back down to wood. Now steel does break down to concrete, but concrete will not break down to iron. Be mindful of this when building your bases and plan accordingly so you don't end up wasting not only your time, but those precious resources too. As I mentioned earlier, structural integrity is a thing in this game. When building your base, keep this in mind. Don't build one support column and then branch off it with your whole roof, because it will come crashing down. You want to build the frame of your base first, just as if you were building a house. And once your framework's built, then you want to fill in the gaps. Different blocks can hold different amounts of weight. You can check this by inspecting your frames. The mass is how much it weighs, and the max load is how much weight that it can hold. So keep this in mind when building with concrete, because the last thing you want to do is waste all of that cement and watch your hard work come crumbling down. If you're big on loot respawning, depending on your settings, I suggest to take notes on when you loot certain towns. If your loot respawn timer is set to 30 days, which is the default, and you drive too close to that building or container, it can actually reset the timer, and you have to wait another 30 days. So make sure you're 100% certain before running in there on day 29 and wondering why everything's still empty. You can also leave an item in anything that you loot, and when you pull that item out, the loot will automatically respawn, no matter how many times you've walked past the container. This mechanic is actually a bug. You will still have to wait the proper amount of days for the loot to respawn though. I left the most important tip for last, and that is to back up your save file every time after you play your game. There is a bug that exists called the MD5 error. And what happens with this bug when your game tries to autosave and load a large chunk in your world that ends up crashing your entire game? Now this isn't even the worst part. When you load back into your game, your character and inventory will be fine, but any blocks you've interacted with, broken or built, will be reset, including your entire base. So it'll be as if you spawned into a new world. This has personally never happened to me, and I hope it doesn't happen to any of you. I couldn't imagine the feeling of losing all that progress. So make sure to back up your save files, because it could very well save your world. But anyways, that about sums it up for this video. I hope you at least learned something new from this, and if you did, let me know in the comments below. What tips you found the most useful, or any tips that you feel should have been a part of this video. Also, if you want to see a more in-depth beginner guide, then let me know because there's still so many things that I didn't cover in this tips and tricks video. Or even if you'd like to see a let's play where I can go into a lot more detail and show you step by step how to become the king of the apocalypse. But anyway, if you did enjoy, feel free to smash that like button with your iron sledgehammer. And as always, stay safe out there survivors, and I'll see you in the next one.